Hi, my name is Santa Dominguez. I'm the family nurse practitioner here at Catalina Island Medical Center. And I believe this is our fifth video. And um, I kid them all because I was the last one on the, on the roster. So I'm really hoping that by this time we still have some following and I hope I don't bore you. I promise I'm only gonna be talking for about seven minutes. But first of all, we wanna start with a really big shout out thank you. We as the healthcare facility and as all the providers, and I can speak for our frontline nurses and our cleaning staff and our clerical people. We just feel so supported by the town. We cannot tell you. We love the noise that you make at eight o'clock at night. I heard one night it was at seven and one at eight. And it just really warms our heart. But really what's more important than that is just how well the whole social distancing is doing. We are doing so much better than we ever thought we would do. We're a small facility. You know we're 12 bed. We have a five bed ER prepared. We've separated in the different sides from nursing home to keep them safe. We've done so many things to prepare and to make sure we can provide the highest level of care to any patients that come in with COVID. That I'm really, I'm, I'm thrilled. I love the team I work with. I think the staff that we have right now, the providers are just, are wonderful. And, um, but we really want to shout out to our community. You should be very proud of yourself. We are not seeing the numbers we expected. You are staying home and you staying home is keeping what we do so much easier. You are keeping people well. We've only had two cases on the island. We've had no community exposure. These are things that you should just like pat yourself on the back. Social distancing is not easy. And I know for myself, I have a grandson that's under a year. It's killing me not to see him. I'm Italian, I wanna feed my family and I can't have people over for dinner. We all have different stories. But I just want to commend you. Social distancing. Keep it going. I believe we're on day 25. It was first started on the 19th of March. We're supposed to go to the 15th of May. We're almost halfway there. In the scope of life, these 60 days will be talked about for years to come, but we just have to sit tight. If you're out walking, exercising, and you see someone coming, just be polite. Wave, say hi, but cross the street. Give everyone at least six feet space from your airspace. Don't get into people's space, even if, no, obviously, you are trying to always stay at the minimum of six feet. So whenever you're out exercising, like I said, or you see anybody, or when you go into bonds, try to shop in a manner that you're not crowding other people. That's all, we all know what social distancing looks like. And the whole sneezing in your arm and not touching your face, I love it. I see so many people just doing the right thing. I love now that we're all wearing masks. Everyone should have masks walking around Avalon. Does it prevent you from getting anything? What it really prevents is from you, in case you have something, you're not gonna expose it to anyone. And we don't know who has COVID. Sometimes we can have it with no symptoms. So to protect anyone that lives here, we cover our mouth wherever we go. And so I just wanna say again, a real shout out. Thank you for all that you're doing. The second thing I wanna talk about is what does this telemedicine phone consult look like? We as providers are now available to you. We can talk through the phone, we can talk through Skype, we can Zoom with you, we can FaceTime. If you wanna see us, if you just wanna to talk to us, we're here. This is not a time to, oh, I don't wanna to go to the doctors, I'm afraid of, you don't need to come in. That's exactly why we sectioned off everything so people don't come in so you won't be exposed. So why is this so important? Well, a lot of the comorbidities that we're seeing with patients that don't do well with COVID are obesity hypertension, heart disease, <clears throat> and uh, what's the, oh, diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, and obesity. Those are four things that we want to make sure that you are keeping really in check. That's our job. Call us, make appointments. We want to make sure if you have diabetes that your A1C is where we want it to be. The lower the A1C, the better controlled your blood sugar are, the better you are going to be if you get COVID. You're going to have a better chance same with obesity. All of, even if you know you're a little bit overweight, if you start monitoring what you're eating, we're going to get to that in a little bit. I'm going to talk to you about how to keep optimal health when you're at home. Um, but for those that have hypertension, Leo's has little blood pressure machines. They're not that expensive. Everybody with chronic hypertension should have a blood pressure machine in their house and they should be checking it on a regular basis. Call in, let us monitor. Let's make sure the medicine that you're on is keeping your blood pressure in check. That's why we're here. So we talked about diabetes. We talked about hypertension. If you're the type that swell up, that you have a little bit of heart failure and you get a little wheezy sometimes or you see your ankles start to swell, call us. 
let's stay on top of it. We don't want anybody to be sitting home thinking, I just want to wait till this whole thing goes over. No, we want you to call so that we can manage you. We can do a lot through telemedicine phone calls. So I wanted to make sure I got that out. So I thanked you first. Second thing I wanted to let you know, if those with comorbidities, I want you to call the clinic and make sure you're in to see us on a regular basis. And the third and the last thing I wanna say before Dr. McGordy comes in, we're sharing this, um, I think about a 15 minute slot. Dr. McGordy is gonna be talking to you about some of the new developments in COVID-19 and also just the reinforcing of the behaviors that we'd like to see for those of us that live in Avalon. So I'm gonna end with just on the third note, how can I protect myself, my children and my family from COVID? What can I do to make sure that I'm in optimum health? I don't have diabetes, I don't have hypertension. So what should I be doing? And these are the things that I wanna say. The circadian rhythm of how well you sleep, that you get enough sleep every day is so critical. People that don't sleep well have such a hard time fighting infections and viruses. So I want to make sure that you're all getting the proper amount of sleep, that you're all eating a well-balanced diet. What does that mean? That means incorporating foods of different colors. You know how pretty it is when you go walk and you see the wildflowers of all different colors? Same with how you eat. You should be eating vegetables of all different colors. I know a lot of you are just, uh, I know, but eating food with a variety, not eating the same thing every day just really helps your body. The other thing I wanted to say is the fluid intake. It's so imperative that you do not run dry, that you keep yourself with a lot of water. You should be urinating on a regular every two to three hours. And when you urinate, it should be clear and it should not be dark. So you're going to eat well. You're going to sleep well. Stress. Now we're all under stress. It's how we embrace this. Things could always be worse. I mean, we could be in the middle of a huge earthquake where everything is devastated. Right now, we're in our controlled environment in our homes. It could be worse. We have to just say, I can do this. I can do this. I'm going to call if I need to. If I'm not emotionally feeling well, call us. We have counselors available that would do telemedicine consults with you. Don't stress at home. If you're feeling like the anxiety is building, call us. Don't let it get to where you feel physically ill about it. So manage your stress. And another really important thing that we forget to talk about is dental health. So much bacteria and virus enter our body when we don't take care of our teeth. Please brush twice a day. Most importantly at night, that's where all the bacteria get in and flaws. I know I'm probably sounding like a broken record, but this is my chance at trying to be your coach to get you in the best optimal health so that if in fact you get exposed to COVID, that you are going to be able to fight it and you are going to be able to do well. So thank you so much for your time. Oh, one last thing. Some of us drink more than we want. Some of us smoke. Some of us take a lot of weed, and we're thinking, hmm, is this going to help me with the COVID? This is what I have to say about that. Obviously, we've always heard everything in moderation is fine. If you're a smoker and there's no chance that you're going to be able to quit, we are here for you if you want to try. We really are. It's not too late. Even if you can just start to cut down, try to cut down. It will put your lungs in better shape. Same with marijuana smokers. I hate that people are smoking marijuana. I mean, there's so many ways to take marijuana if you're going to take it, but smoking it does the same damage as it does as tobacco. And we talked about moderation with drinking. If you drink a lot, you should just cut back. You don't want to be drinking to the point where your levels of sugar and alcohol are so high that it's hurting your immune system. That's the only reason why you have to be careful. You want to keep your immune system, your ability for your body to fight something at its strongest. Okay, we talked about smoking. We're gonna, if you can quit, we're here for you. We can help. We can give you certain medications to help you come off smoking. This is what a great time to do it. So thanks so much for your time. Dr. McGordy is going to be coming in just a moment to uh, let you know some updates with COVID. Thanks so much for your time. This is Dr. McGordy. I'm following uh, Santa, who gave a enthusiastic, inspiring uh, talk about uh, what we're working on here, what we're available to do here. Also, kind of impressions as to things that we should be doing to stay healthy at home. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the newer developments of COVID-19. Uh, there's a few things that have come out over the weekend uh, in the past uh, three to five days talking about different types of treatments. Uh, that's one of the things that we're most concerned about has been the problem that we just don't have good treatments. Uh, there's a antiviral medication out named remdesivir, which apparently looks like it may be helpful. We don't have full details. That won't be back till the end of the month, but it does appear to decrease people's need to be on a ventilator or 
to have to require oxygen, uh, and that's what the preliminary findings are showing. They did a kind of study of about 53 people that they've been able to get some uh, basic you know, information from. But again, uh, nothing conclusive, but just you know, some good news. And a lot of these companies out there are donating uh, medications. Uh, that particular medication has had um, multiple uh, millions of doses that have been, uh, you know, kind of donated by the company. Um, the uh, I think the actual uh, amount that they plan on trying to do by the end of the year is almost a, a million treatment regimens, uh, and this is a multi-dose type medication. There's also something called convalescent serum, which has been used in a variety of different illnesses, even back to the Spanish flu back in uh, 1917 or 1918. And basically what that is, is they basically take the uh, plasma from uh, the patients who've recovered from the illness, and that now has antibodies that can actually fight the virus. And they'll go ahead and uh, clean that up and uh, give it back to patients who are, you know, significantly ill, critically ill with this. Um, so the hope is that that will have some benefit. They also have other types of uh, uh, things that they're doing, including something called blood purification technology. These are all things that are new, and it's just been a benefit to try and, uh, you know, do as much as we can. Uh, and this is science, trying to lead the way with, uh, with you know, following on the social benefits of the uh, social distancing and uh, excessive hand washing and just protecting our, ourselves and others from the from the virus. Uh, so you're allowing science to kind of catch up on this and we do appreciate that uh, quite a bit. One of the things we are learning is that men are a bit more affected than women, not in numbers, but just in the lethality of the disease. Uh, hospitalized patients, uh, we're finding that uh, people who are of older age, and we've known this now for a while, are that are being hospitalized are actually dying at a higher rate. Uh, so it is incredibly important for, for young folks to you know, help protect the older generation and the elderly population. Uh, in California, we've had about 23,000 cases now, about 682 deaths at this point in time. Uh, Santa talked a little bit about risk factors and there's a variety of risk factors are, that are a problem. She mentioned obesity and diabetes, hypertension, um, being immunocompromised is a risk factor. Uh, so you look at things like even smokers are uh, a bit immunocompromised, uh, people who have liver disease, people who are under treatment for cancer. Uh, you also have folks who are taking medications which may suppress your immune system, like people who are on chronic prednisone or chronic steroids. Uh, those are things, are, those are folks that, that really need to be managed actively. And that's kind of what we're here, and Santa uh, particularly uh, mentioned that. Uh, we are here to, you know, talk to you folks and kind of help you with uh, managing your diabetes and um, managing uh, other issues, health issues that you may have, because we're trying to get everybody tuned up uh, in order to fight off this virus. There's some risk factors that are out there that you can't change. I mean, the fact if you're if if men are having a more significant disease uh, course with this, if we're finding that men are more uh, likely to die from this, there's there's nothing you can change about that. Um, there's also, um, you know, age. You, we can't change our age. Many of us would love to be about 20 years younger and relive that part of our lives, but unfortunately, we can't change that at this time. Um, if you're in a nursing home, that's something that you can't change whatsoever. And so those are risk factors that you can't change. But as Santa was mentioning, there's a lot of risk factors that we can help with, and we'd love to be able to kind of help with you folks in managing your diabetes, uh, whether this is over the phone or, you know, just discussions as to what we can do uh, to help you uh, stay more healthy. Um, and we can do that, as she said, based on telemedicine. Uh, telemedicine is something that most physicians and most hospitals are using now in order to interact with patients. Uh, we're certainly up and running with it here. There's a variety of different methods that we can use in order to try and help that. Um, one of the other things I did want to do and, and tagging onto what she, she said is, is just to really congratulate people on doing the right thing. Uh, there's an old saying that sometimes it's it's more difficult to do the harder right than the easier wrong. But when I look around the community here and with people staying in and, and people wearing masks when they go out and with the social distancing, it's it's certainly true that the community here is experiencing doing the harder right rather than the easier wrong. Um, I think Santa mentioned that this was uh, day uh, 25 of the um, stay at home type order that um, Governor Newsom had uh, given to us. Um, it's also uh, some some 
a period of time where uh, many of us have developed like you know new friendships and relationships uh, you know it's easy to do that even online um, personally I have uh, developed a new best friend um, called Netflix um, currently thinking about possibly generating another friendship with Hulu uh, and I uh, just really experienced kind of what it's like to actually be sort of confined to the house and have to find ways in order to occupy yourself so just kind of keep up the good work uh, stay at home, uh, visit with uh, your, your family that's at home. Um, if you are going to go out for exercise, that's certainly uh, encouraged. Uh, you have to stay healthy so by um, you know, being outside and getting good exercise. Please uh, maintain social distancing though. Please wash your hands, uh, cough into your elbow and um, sneeze into your elbow. Uh, make sure you do use hand sanitizer when you go to the grocery store go in as far as use the hand sanitizer and then when you leave go ahead and use the hand hand sanitizer that they've uh, put up for you most of the businesses that are still open have markings on the floor please be aware of them in order to try and keep the appropriate social distance uh, we will all get through this together i uh, really appreciate everybody's uh, hard work at, at staying at home in order to allow us to not have to take care of the great number of patients that we could have seen. Um, this is not over though. Uh, please continue to uh, maintain all the uh, appropriate behaviors that we need to in order to keep this virus in check and ensure that we can all have a healthy and more prosperous summer.